Welcome to our Taking Stock video for the week ending the 25th of August 2023. I'm Ken Trin, Head of Research at Stock Doctor, and today I'm joined by our Senior Portfolio Manager, Matthew Swartz, to stream to your All Things Share Market. How are you today, Matt? I'm very well, thanks, Ken. It's great to be joining you again. Likewise, but uh, before we get started, just a quick yet important reminder the information we provide during this episode is of a generic nature and therefore shouldn't be considered personal advice. Remember, shares are volatile. Any charts or tables we present today shouldn't be relied upon as a guide for future performance. Well, Matt, it's been an interesting reporting season with a few surprises, especially across the consumer retail segment. And even though most companies have been able to meet market expectations, which were, mind you, uh, quite low to begin with, the outlook guidance has been relatively weak, and this is consistent with our thoughts prior to the reporting season, where we did highlight the large difference between what the analysts were estimating compared to various leading economic indicators. Yeah, I, I do think that's right, Ken. And you know, look from a fund perspective, we do continue to see heightened risks for negative earnings revisions as we do progress through this financial year. And for those that are interested in our broader macro view, uh, view, Tim and I did a webinar more recently which uh, and where we laid out our case for positioning our portfolios more defensively into the headwinds of tightening monetary policy and the lagging impacts you, you tend to see from that from an economic activity perspective. Uh, and most recently, we have taken the opportunity, while what we saw as overly optimistic market sentiment and reduced risk further across all of our managed fund portfolios. And we have indirectly sold futures contracts to significantly reduce our portfolio's volatility. And this in turn provides significant protection from our unit holders from market corrections. And pleasingly, since activating that tactical strategy, all of our funds have performed really well and significantly outperformed their benchmarks for August. Yeah, and uh, taking a look at the chart on screen, you can see really see the risk to earnings. And the chart really compares the all odds index, and that's in blue, with the earnings expectations in black. And during the reporting season, we continue to see earnings downgrades flow through. And this is the line in black. And with the uncertainty around the earnings outlook, coupled with stubbornly high inflationary cost pressures and rising interest expenses, financially weak businesses remain quite vulnerable. Take, for example, financial software provider Iris. The business is categorised as marginal financial health and due partly to its elevated total liabilities to tangible assets ratio. And the balance sheet shows significant debt also, indicated by a net debt to equity ratio of 169%. There is also a large intangible asset base at 65%, most of which is goodwill derived from numerous acquisitions that they've made historically. And not surprising to us, the stock plummeted by almost 30% after the company cut its full year earnings guidance and suspended its dividend to help pay down that debt. And Stock Doctor members have been able to avoid this disaster during reporting season. Yeah, there's uh, plenty of examples like this, but uh, it does remind us, Matt, that uh, large companies are not immune and investors really should act independently of brokers who had a buy rating on the stock potentially because it, it does appear that the company is highly profitable with a return on equity of 16% and net profit margins close to 10%. But let's now turn our attention to some star stock highlights for the week. The market uh, reacted positively to printed circuit board software designer Altium's result after they beat market expectations on their earnings guidance implying stable margins with around 20% top-line revenue growth for this year. Yeah, great result. But I, I must admit, Ken, that I was a bit surprised at how well the stock traded after its solid operating result. Um, for those that aren't familiar with the company, Altium produces software for largely electro, uh, electrical engineers that are designing circuit, uh, circuits for a range of products from consumer electrical devices to automobiles and medical devices. Uh, Altium also discussed their transition to a cloud-based ecosystem for its suite of products, which we think positions the company well for increased scale and efficiencies longer term. And in other exciting developments, Altium have partnered with Renesos Electronics Corporation, which is a Japanese global semiconductor solutions business. And with such a significant customer win, it does highlight Altium's leading platform capabilities and its ability to keep new customers coming through their doors. And the great thing about uh, having a cloud-based ecosystem is that revenue becomes reoccurring from existing customers. 
Interestingly, Matt, the stock is now trading well above its takeover offer from USP Autodesk for around $40 per share back in June 2021. And another company to release a strong result was salary packaging and innovated leasing business, Macmillan Shakespeare. And demand for electric vehicles seems to have been a decisive driver of performance, with management noting 21% of all innovated lease orders were for electric vehicles. Yeah, exciting result. And uh, another rock solid one from one of the best performing stocks in the market this year. But it wasn't without its volatility uh, after it released its financials, with the stock initially rising by 13% on the day, only to fall 11% the day after. Our, our view is obviously that there was just a bit too much excitement on uh, the day that it released and it ran into some profit taking. And operationally, shareholders should note that there are still some supply chain bottlenecks when it comes to vehicle availability, which has resulted in 32 million of carryover orders into financial year 24. Yeah, the risks are still lingering there, Matt. But um, moving on, if you can recall, English language testing company IDP Education, they provided a negative trading update in May as changes in the Canadian student visa program meant that uh, future competition for English testing in the region would intensify. And this led to negative earnings revisions for the stock. However, judging by the share price reaction to the company's financial year 23 result, which was in line with expectations, you would think that it's clear skies ahead. Are you able to shed some light on this, Matt? I can, and pardon the pun, Ken, but it seems as though IDP Education managed to pass the test. Uh, it's a uh, financial year 23 result pointed to a really strong recovery, uh, recovery particularly in the student placements revenue, uh, which was up 63% on the previous corresponding period. And the revenue growth was attributed to Australia, the US, Canada, and the UK welcoming back international students following what was a hugely disruptive COVID lockdown period. And from an English testing segment perspective, revenue was up uh, 6% in constant currency terms, which was predominantly due to price increases whilst testing volumes were relatively flat. And uh, drilling into the numbers, Matt, uh, English testing volumes were down about 9% in India, which management did suggest that uh, it was due to lower volumes of students choosing to study in Canada. Is this outcome tied really to the changes in the Canadian visa requirements? Really good question, Ken. Uh, but the, the changes to the Canadian visa requirements don't come into effect until August 23. So the slowdown in India is more a reflection of visa processing delays and elevated rejection rates. So reading between the lines, we'd expect to see further declines in FY24 um, from this segment, and we'll continue to monitor this active risk heading into the first half result in 24. Yes, uh, certainly, Matt. And uh, with the end of reporting season in sight, uh, next week, there will be a few results, including uh, Linus, uh, John's Ling, we've got Brambles and also Kelsium Group as well. But uh, please refer to the corporate calendar for more details on ex-dividend dates and results. Now for Under the Microscope this week, we take a closer look at logistics software company, WiseTech. The market reacted negatively to its financial year 23 result, with the share price down about 20%, following a 15% downgrade to its financial year 24 earnings margins. Yeah, it was a fairly steep reaction from the market, wasn't it, Can um, Clearly, investors are disappointed that management did downgrade their uh, margin guidance for FY24, and the, the company did attribute the expected decline in margins from its full year contributions from recent acquisitions, Bloom Global and Envay's technology, which are currently less profitable than the existing business. Yes, and uh, the reason why the market got their assumptions on margins wrong was because WiseTech initially said that they were going to build just an API link to Bloom and Envay's. But now they are spending extra to accelerate the full integration. And this is going to result in higher costs which would suppress margins into the future. And with the company's share price rallying strongly into the financial year 23 result, a good question here, Matt, is should investors consider taking profits? Well, we always encourage clients to take profits, particularly when stocks have experienced strong outperformance relative to the market. But uh, 
clearly we still hold a very favorable for favorable view for wise tech uh the, the company has clearly been through various hiccups in the past uh as we can recall they were the subject of a short report back in 2020 but they've always bounced back uh, bigger and stronger. And that's largely a function of the fact that we consider them to be a very high quality growth company. Yes. Um, and it's probably a good time to point out, Matt, that the company does trade on high multiples as well. And that can cause severe share price reactions if the result comes in below market expectations. Wisetech is trading on a PE of greater than 100 times, for instance. And uh, but normally with these companies, as you suggest, they typically possess high quality attributes with very strong earnings growth over the medium term. Correct. And you know, tech stocks that do have this long runway for above trend growth do tend to trade on high multiples. So uh, we need to look at valuation, not just at an absolute level, but also relative to its peer groups and, and the, the broader industry in general. And I've also noticed, uh, Matt, that the CEO and founder, Richard White, he has sold a small portion of shares in March. And uh, although in hindsight, this may have potentially raised a red flag for its upcoming result, we note that Richard still holds a substantial stake in the business with around 36% of total shares on issue. Following on from the volatile session with WiseTech, a good question this week is, how do investors deal with significant negative share price reactions? Firstly, you need to have a risk management strategy in place. According to Nobel Prize laureate Harry Makowitz, diversification is the only free lunch in investing. By holding a well-balanced portfolio, you effectively reduce the impact to your overall portfolio if a significant loss arises with one stock. And if you are trend sensitive, consider applying one of our technical indicators, such as the SD30 TSR. Here, you need to be quite systematic with your approach and sell out of a stock once it turns bearish or triggers your stop loss. However, if you do view share price weakness as an opportunity, which we oftentimes do within our fund team, it would be best to ensure you read our commentary specifically around the active risks to understand why the share price has reacted negatively. And be objective and leave your emotions at the door. Assess the stock according to your return and risk objective and ask yourself a few questions. Has its financial health deteriorated? Are the active risks a short-term issue or expected to linger for longer? Is the dividend sustainable and will it meet your income requirements for the year ahead? And are there better opportunities elsewhere? And could you offset my realised gains with these losses for tax purposes? And uh, remember, it's almost impossible to get everything right and there will inevitably um, be some losses in your portfolio. But the aim here is to cut your losses and let your profits run. Do not hold onto a stock on hope that it will recover. Rather, be objective and reallocate those funds to better opportunities with stronger future prospects. That's all we have time for today. And uh, thanks, Matt, uh, for joining our discussions. Always a pleasure, Ken. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. I know it's a busy time for you, but uh, also a reminder that uh, we've got our Lincoln Live webinar on Monday. So please come along to ask our panel of experts on stocks, portfolio strategy, and how to use Stock Doctor. Well, to summarize today's episode, earnings downgrades continue to come through with increasing uncertainty around management guidance this reporting season. Financially unhealthy businesses like Iris are among the stocks that are most vulnerable this reporting season. So be wary of these stocks in your portfolio. Take care and have a happy, healthy and prosperous week ahead.